All right, guys. Here is my new Mando DT27. Uh, this is my custom design based off of the Volcanic. Um, I've been wanting to do this for a while. I think it turned out pretty, pretty dang awesome. Um, it, st it still has the, the cocking hammer. Uh, it still has the cocking lever on the bottom. Um, it's got acrylic uh, lenses for the scope. Uh, I did this little scope design here. I thought it was kind of cool with the back uh, lens kind of set off. Um, but yeah, I try to put in some like little touches from here and there and, uh, like some of these little side gribbles. These are kind of like, um, uh, like sort of come from Cobb Vance, uh, blaster, which I like a lot. Uh, did some heat sinking on the bottom down here. Uh, went to being a double barrel, um, instead of a single barrel. These side panels actually are floating. The only place they're attached is by the screws on these pedestals. They actually, you can, you can see that they, they actually float. They're not, they don't touch the barrel anywhere. So they're just kind of like heat shields. Uh, that's kind of why in the rendering I did these, I rendered these as like wood along with the wood here, which I thought looked really freaking cool. Um, but yeah, so what we're going to do now is we're going to assemble one um, and go for that. I also, I went through and I split the grip uh, and made, you know, this piece metal, uh, which I thought was kind of cool looking. Uh, so it gives you kind of a four sectioned wood grip or, you know, a ivory, whatever you're going to do your grip in. And you can continue your metal down or, you know, whatever you want to do. I just thought that was kind of a cool little offset um, to break up the volcanic that's sweeping this big old grip on it but um, it's 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 a nice fitting blaster but all right so let's set this off to the side and let's get our kit out here so this is exactly the way it'll come uh, Get everything out here all right we got our body this is our double barrel and these are the standoffs that i was talking about that the um basically these heat shields um I, uh, grab the correct side here but they attach to just there and that's it that's it that's all they attach to the, these are the only thing that the, it's touching um so i thought i thought that was kind of cool um, so there's that. Oh, also kind of went with to fill in this big long gap area. It's kind of like a Remington, like a say 1858 or whatever kind of barrel, uh, just cocking arm, which I thought was kind of cool, brought it all together and everything. So, um, I think it turned out badass, but so there's our grips. And I wish I could remember his name. The customer contacted me a couple of months back and said, you know, I think the Volcanic would be a really cool base for uh, a custom blaster. And I had I'd had this on my list forever. And when he, when he brought it back up to me, I was like, you know what? I need to do that. I need to get all these ideas that I have floating around in my head. Uh, it's just hard to find the time to get all those ideas out. Um, but so here's our scope, our scope bracket. This is our side panel, um, which is the same venting and writing on both sides. Our cocking lever. Everything down here. And a whole pile of miscellaneous stuff. Uh, our orange tip. These are our scope rings and lens retainer. Uh, there's our heat sink. These are our scope arms. Let me get that out of here. That's our other scope arm. And these, our lenses come like this. Um, all you have to do is peel this back, 
It's just a uh, protective paper on the lens. Um, I actually have some fingernails. Anyways, I'll get it in a second. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, so it comes right off both sides, just the way you protect them, keep them from getting scratched while they're in the bag and stuff. Uh, hammer, trigger, our little side greebles, um, our front sight, which is in it, will be in a separate bag because it's so dang tiny. Don't want to lose it. Um, and then all our screws and springs and all that good stuff. So let's go ahead and we'll get started. <clears throat> and probably the the best thing to do here is we'll go ahead and get the barrel onto the body. Then we'll probably end up doing the getting the grip on. And then we'll start uh, assembling and putting all this other stuff together. Uh, get our screws out here. We won't take the side out right now because if I take the side out right now, I'll lose it. Bet money on me doing that. All right. Screws, screws, and more screws. Okay. Get the glue out. Again, this is CA glue. It's a two-part glue. It's basically super glue with an activator that makes it pretty much harden right I don't want to say instantly but within like a second or two um, I also like it thick super glue works just fine for this but one thing about super glue is it tends to fog leaves a white residue behind whenever um, um, like you you um, as soon as it cures it'll sometimes like fog out and and leave a stain on on what you're doing and stuff is that especially sucks when you're gluing together painted parts then you got to deal with the fog or the smoke remnants on your paint so um, try to find a low flash um, slow slow or low flash uh, thick super glue or a CA glue this doesn't really flash out or anything um, violently <laughs> so First off, the, the barrel, it's it's a very simple connection. Um, you know, we're just gonna glue it together like that and let it set. Um, let's get our glue out here. Again, put the glue down in the hole. Don't put the glue on here. Reason being is just get in the habit of always putting it around the edge of the hole because when you put these parts together, you want the glue to wipe down into the hole. If you put the glue around this, on this, it probably wouldn't be so bad because the offset is, is quite a bit. But if you put it around the shaft, when you go to push that together, it's going to it's gonna smear your glue back and then out. So if you put it in here, it's going to smear the glue down in there where you want it to be. Now, you can put a little glue on the face if you want to. That's perfectly fine. But the, the bulkier glue needs to be down around and again, if you want to just hit the edge of that, that's more than fine. Just you, you, you always got to think about how it's going to uh, squish out and try to prevent that. So there, we'll just hold that together for a second. Yeah, there we go. So we're together now. That's the bulk of the, that's a good hefty, you know, part of the body right there. <laughs> uh, okay. So now what we have here is we got our grip. The grip gets held onto the body um, with the big 45 millimeter long Phillips screw. Pretty much what I do in every one of my kits because it makes a really, really good, strong connection from here to here, uh, which because you know when you're handling, that's that's where all your, your wiggle and your wobble is gonna be and, and the stress on your gun, so. Um, so just kind of wiggle it around until it comes through, kind of where we're at. And then you have the matching hole right there. So I just put it to the hole and then I push that to where it's flat. And that will basically align the screw up and have it going in straight the way it should. Now these will be long winded. Um, and what I normally do on any screw that's long to screw in like this is I'll screw it for a minute and I'll stop. And let that screw cool down because that screw is making threads into this plastic and that generates 
a butt ton of heat, and that is a technical term. You can look it up, butt ton. But it makes a, uh, generates a butt ton of heat, and that will actually melt your plastic. Even if it's ABS, you know, nylon or whatever, you're talking about hundreds of degrees worth of heat from the friction. If I let it cool for a second, which also helps set in the new threads, and then I'll screw it in some more. And right when it gets to the point it's tight, I'll stop, I'll stop and let it cool almost thoroughly. I'll find something else to do and come back. And that last bit, super tight, super tight. It's not going anywhere now. And then our grips, they just, they simply go on and um, find our little uh, grip screws here. And the grip screws are, they're 10 millimeter flat blade cheese heads. Um, so, all we're gonna do is drop that bad boy in there like that, and my favorite type of screw in the world, a flat blade. That's sarcasm. Ugh. I don't know how many paint jobs, well, back in the day when I used to still be able to paint stuff, I had time to do that, I'd screwed up from trying to screw in a flat blade screw. And I thought about changing these away from flat blades, but I was like, you know, I don't want to get rid of too much of the nostalgic part of it being and, you know, an old Western, you know, I, I like, I like kind of like the, the, the Cobb Vance style, what they did with him and his blaster. And that, that's my type of the Mandalorian universe and stuff is the gunslinger, bounty hunter, um, you know, and, and this, so the old Western style, uh, blasters really appeal to me. So there, now we got it all together and it, lo it looks like a big old walking cane right now without, you know, the cocking lever and all that stuff in there. So, uh, we'll go ahead and probably, um, you know what, we'll go ahead and do the cocking lever, the hammer, the trigger, and all that stuff before we get too far along, get too much stuff in the way. So we're going to need both the springs. We're going to need the set screw. It's not a head, it, it's not a screw with the head missing. It's actually got, um, sorry about that. It actually has a hole in it um, for an Allen wrench to go in. Um, here, let me swap my, my Allen bit here. And this isn't particularly, uh, an, an Allen bit I have here. This is the wrong size of everything that I have in front of me. Just a second. Okay. So it's just a little, little Torx bit or Allen. Uh, but Torx is what I happen to have laying around that's that's that size. My other one out. Try not to dump my stuff out here. Hold my mouth just right. Okay, anyways. And you're gonna need these two longer flat blades, which should be about should be the only two that's left besides the Allen screws that hold the barrel covers on. Um, so that that's what we're down to. The Allen screw will uh, go in, or the set screw will go in last when you go to screw this on, um, which I think I may have. One of these was I have to do it in a certain, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. That's all it was, is I remember when I, I first assembled this that and after you paint this, you may want to go ahead and put your caulking lever and stuff in first before you put your grip on, because since this has been an addition, you have to caulk it in here and just twist it. Well, you don't want to drag it and mess up your paint. So you can put all this together before you put your grip on. Um, I just wanted to remember to say that. Okay, let's see. Um, Trying to get my head straight here for a second. Okay, so the hammer, the hammer has its own spring. 
it goes in just like this. There is a hole down in here that the hammer spring sits down in. So if you want to here, I'll just go ahead and drop it down in the hole. So you can see it just sits in the hole. It's no, no big deal. Then there's a hole on the back of the hammer. All we're going to do is put that in there. And we are going to move this around until I hold my tongue just right. And I'll try to get it for you guys so you can see. Not lined up. See, there's a hole on the bottom there. We're going to swing that until it lines up. And as we're holding our tongues just right and all that good stuff, we're going to put the screw through there. And Okay. So now all we're going to do is we're going to screw this bad boy in here. And you'll have to forgive me. I shot this assembly video like two weeks ago and edited it and everything was fine and I uploaded it and it kept coming out corrupted and like no matter what I did so this is me shooting this for the second time and I know it may sound funny but I work on so many of my models <laughs> and like I'm currently designing another one right now so my brain like I sit here and I go to assemble these things and heck I design this and everything and I got to stop for a minute and go okay how did I put this together pretty sad but you know whatever clear this out go ahead and oops what am I doing wrong screw Allen our set screw sorry about that so the set screw is going to be our trigger screw. So what I do is I get it started. I look straight down, make sure it is 90 degree to the body that way. Then I'll look at another angle and make sure it's 90 degree and go around that way. And that is the wrong bit because now it's spinning in there. So let me find the correct bit. Uh, see, what helps is when you don't drop your bit tray and have to pick all your bits up after they went scattering all over the floor and you kind of just half-ass try to put them back in the right place as you're trying to hurry and pick them up and do other things so trying to not having them in order slows things down but anyways oops. let's try that all right so anyways i pre-screw this in until it makes its way through the body. Okay. See it poking out right there? Then we just back it up to where it's not in the way. Um, all we are going to do is put the trigger in now. And we're just going to look to line it up there. The easiest way to line it up is go ahead and start screwing it. Think you're in the right place. Kind of move it around. Boom, there it fell in. So you can't see, look through this side. So it's kind of just one of those things that you got to feel your way around. Uh, and there we go. We're just looking for it to be flush with that. So that it's not in the way that when we put the cover on. Um, the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and pop this dude in here. Uh, like we did just a minute ago. And, oh crap. Is that what I had to do? I couldn't remember about there we go I forced it in FYI I put this in then put in the trigger <laughs> uh, I knew there was two different things that I needed to remember to say again yeah I don't know what corrupted my video but man it it just sets me back so much because not only does it corrupt my video but I have to actually print up another kit for me to be able to use for the video all this hairy stuff off of here so in a nutshell when we put this cover on this screw holds the cover on it goes through here holds the cocking lever in, in place uh, basically the hole lines up back here so all we got to do is just drop this on it's it's not that big of big of a deal or hard to do um, put it through this little cover real quick
and again not my favorite screws in the world you know I never understood why it took so long for them and again I guess you can say that about any invention you know hindsight's always 2020 but why it took so long to come up with another screw head type besides dealing with um, uh, flat blade screws because it's enough to drive you insane it will drop oh, hold on I promise y'all you're not missing anything just me trying to hold my tongue just right while screwing this in it's just hard to do reaching out in front of me like that you know I got to use that third arm the belly to to hold it steady and all that good stuff. And again, um, and I normally say this at the beginning of the videos, but this has got me all thrown off having to reshoot this. Um, I usually pre-assemble a kit, the screws, where uh, the parts that go together with screws to go ahead and ha get the threads cut and the sizing and stuff of the holes. That way you're not having to fight with or do that after you've painted your parts. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, um, it's just something for you to think about. So. Cause I mean, it's a pain in the butt. You're sitting there, like right now, I mean, I've already, you know, poked my finger in the, the, the model two or three times. Um, and not because I want to, you know. <laughs> um, but because um, it's just, it's very hard, especially these long skinny screws like this. You know, I'm sitting here doing this. Um, very hard to... Um, hold everything straight where it should be and not slip out of this this little slot and I said let me clean the back side of this hole that's what it is Put all this back together. There's nothing like doing it twice. That's my favorite thing. I love doing everything twice. Actually, there's nothing that really pisses me off more than having to do, do something the second time after I've already done it. It's like I'm ready to move on. Got better things to do. Get stuff done. See, that would have been gouged number like four in my paint job. By now, I'd have already been like getting really pissed off and long winded flat blades. Gotta love them. All right. I promise I've almost got this screwed in again. All right. Okay, there we go. Much better. All right, and then hold this back. Okay, wiggle all this stuff. There we go. All right. Cocking and locking like it's supposed to do it. Okay. So next thing is, we'll go ahead and get some of this miscellaneous stuff glued together. We'll put our side panels on probably last. Let's go ahead and assemble our scope. You'll need the body. You got the two scope arms and the, and the rings here. Uh, if you notice on these scope arms, there's these... Um, little notches you have a long and a short long and short side on the body of 
the scope here, you've got a matching notch. And on one of the rings, you also have two notches on the side. So basically that shape right there, okay? So if you notice, that's a short notch, long notch. You have short notch, long notch. So that notch is gonna, the long notch goes in the body here, okay? The short notch goes in here. Pretty so, you know, pretty straightforward. So what I do is I glue the, the two arms onto the body first. Just like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my glue which I already let a little bit of it dry on the end, so that's always awesome. Okay, cool, it didn't dry close. All right, I just take a little bit of glue and just kind of put down in there just a bit. Take my little guys and... And this activator doesn't, if you do use CA glue, you don't have to worry about this activator messing with, like, um, your paint or anything. Well, I'll, I'll say you don't have to worry about it messing with getting it on here and then painting over it later. It doesn't really leave a residue behind. Um, as far as like if you've urethane or enamel spray painted your stuff, you don't have to worry about it. Uh, if you have exposed acrylic paint, you would probably have to worry about it making it run. But again, if you if you put acrylic water-based paint on top of your spray paint, you always want to seal it with clear coat anyways to protect it, and that would also protect it from anything, you know, rubbing it off or, or uh, anything like that messing it up. So now we, we have this, and what we're going to do is you've got, the, again, the small notch on both sides, and when you put it together, it's going to look just like this. The one thing that you want to look out for when you're putting it together is glue is if you notice you don't want it cocked you want it straight so the easiest thing to do is once you glue it together is just press right there straight down because that notch will put it in there straight but if you're if you push off to the side a little bit you're going to make it crooked so just put your glue in there and then pop the bad boy down in there and instead of trying to hold it like this just hold it right there and what I'll probably do right now is I'm probably going to glue my fingers a bit. <laughs> um, but, and actually, you know what? Let me wipe this off. Because I want y'all to be... A, the, 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 the manner in which I'm doing it is the way I normally do it. But I want you guys... I need to... So it's easier to show you guys on these lenses. What I've done is you have this notched sorry about that front lens cover that goes on the front here then you have this smaller ring you know which doesn't really seem to fit anywhere but this back the back piece of the scope on the inside this ring has a lip let me get back over there for you guys all right it has a lip and what, what's going to happen is that gets glued in just like that right there. The reason for that is so that you don't have to put glue on the edge of your lenses and run the risk of screwing up your lenses. Because um, it's a pain in the butt when you have to go in and try to put glue on the edges of your lenses or anything acrylic to get to stay. I don't have the fingernails for this. Hold on, let me find a little bit. Just don't have the fingernails for this right now. Okay. Okay, come on, come on. There we go. There we go. All right, now the only thing on there is my, my fingerprints. So on the front here, that sits down inside of a, a, a little groove right in there. So you don't have to glue that. So you can actually just put your little bit of glue on the outside edge right there and set your lens down in there. And we're going to just go boom and glue that on. And you should have this tiny little gap that should be there. That's, that's the way it's supposed to be. And you, you know, 
comes out fine. You didn't have to put any glue on your lens, which is great. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just going to go through right here and want it on the outside. And don't mind my shaky hands. I've had way too much coffee today. Or it may be tonight. I don't know what time it is right now. All right, so now that I've put that on there, I'm just gonna go through here and go boop. And remember, little bit of glue, little bit of glue. A lot of glue goes a long ways. A little bit of glue, not so much. And that's what you want here. You're not looking to go a long way. Because the longer way you go, the bigger chance you have of it running out and getting on your lens. So we've got that lens glued in and there's zero glue on our lens. That's exactly what we wanted. All right. And the cool part is, is it the the design of this scope is like it's still you can you can reach into the back of this scope here even once this lens is on. So what we're going to do now is let me get this paper off of here. Uh, I have one finger that has a fingernail on it. Well, no, those, I guess those, that hand has some on it. Let me get this started here. I remember I had a girl one time. She contacted me and sent me just it was the nastiest message in the world. I'm talking about she had bought her boyfriend, my other original, my uh, the my original design, the uh, Mando DT10, and she was like, "If I knew that you were going to send me wood lenses, that's so dumb." And she went on and on and just I mean she reamed me out in this like four paragraph long how horrible of a human being I am message. And I messaged her back and said, you just have to take the protective paper off. They're clear lenses. And the only thing she said back was, thanks for making me look stupid. That's all I got to say about that. I don't know how you make someone look stupid for showing their ass, but, you know, whatever. Okay, so on this one, we, we see, we, whoops. We just drop our lens down in here. It just sets down in there. We've got our little groove. And so it, that just sits on there like that. So this is going to be one of these things that we want to make sure, again, we don't get glue on our lens. So this time, we're going to come put glue right here, like in that little groove right there. We don't want to go on this side at all or, or try our best to stay off of this wall so it doesn't get squished down around. And again, if I can pull this off with my shaky hand, y'all, you guys should be able to pull this off. So, and it doesn't have to be a much. You don't have to go in here and make sure that you have an airtight seam of glue all the way around the edge. I just put two little drops. Ha <laughs> ha! Look at that! Look at that! Look! 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 Look what we done did there. Look at that. <laughs> so now our lens is encapsulated in there. We got no, nothing but big old goofy fingerprints on our lens. And it's held there. So we, so even after painting, here, let me, we're going to get the uh, fingerprints off the lens. All right. So there we go. And so now, now back to what I was saying, we're going to go in here and we're just going to, Put us a little couple drops of glue on there and push and hold right there as it dries because that's going to keep it square um, and we'll be all good. And normally, you know, I always say put the glue down in there, but I'm actually going to put the glue here because if I put it there as I'm going down, I don't want to scrape it off and it bunch up out here. If there's any that's going to bunch up, I'd rather it happen in there a little bit. So uh, again, it's just a drop of glue. You don't need a bunch. Let's get in here. Mm 
and we're just going to hold it. I glued my finger. See, I told you, told you a while ago, I was probably going to glue my finger on there. I like it when I keep my word. Here we go. So, all straight. Scope is done, built. Look at that, look at that. All right, and so then we have our scope bracket, which, I mean, that's kind of self-explanatory. That goes right on just like that. Um, so what we're looking at is we have our scope bracket. It screws on. It's always best to hold this up here so you can get it. So when you do glue this on, you don't screw up and put it the wrong way. So technically, you can screw. Well, you can take this on and off. But by just unscrewing it, you don't have to put any glue on this bracket down here. You'll glue the bracket to here. But what I'm going to do for right now is I'm going to screw this on before I glue that on, just so it's easier for everyone to see what I'm doing. So Allen wrench, um, these little lovely sockets, and these are all the same. These are the same ones that hold the barrel covers on, um, all of that good stuff. So, leave that kind of loose so I don't have to fight with with where the next hole is lining up. And I am going to try to get some uh, painting or how to paint videos done here in the next month or so. Because, I mean, I've been meaning to do it for a long, 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 long time and I keep being asked about it. And it's, it's you know, when you're a one man show between trying to produce the kits and get them out and design new kits and shoot videos and you know you name it it's there's only so many hours in the day so um there we go so that's on we're going to do the scope in a minute we're going to go ahead and do the rest of the little greebles and stuff so we just don't have the scope in the way at the moment so get that over there Go, going to go ahead and put the front side on. And if you notice, the front side is a blade. Is a blade. You want the blade running from front to back, just like that. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little drippity drop in there. That's a technical term as well, too. You can look it up. And, well, if I can... See, some of this stuff I just can't hold and put on camera at the same time. And again, test fit the sight in the front to make sure it is correct or that you can get it down in the hole without much of an issue. There we go. All right, sight's on. So now I'm going to do the rear sight, which the rear sight is just this little dude here. Uh, and it sits down in this little groove. So you're going to put a little drop of glue under there, set it down, kind of put a finger on both sides, and using the, your own touch, you can tell if it's centered or not. Um, I think a, a lot of people don't rely on their, their sense of touch enough um, to, te you know, to, to whatever it is they're trying to do. And they second-guess themselves, and then they're like, I need a... I need a tool, I need a tool. Your sense of touch is about the, one of the most amazing tools that you can you can have. And just me having my hand on both sides of that at the same time pressing down, I can feel the body, I can feel the sight, I know it's centered. Um, I would take my mic and, and put it up against that. Mic it out and I guarantee you it's centered. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and pop this dude on and need to make sure it just fits in there like that of course I'm not going to leave it that way I'm going to put a little bit of glue in there so um, so all I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little bead down this side bitty bitty bead down this side I'm going to spray my dude there you go and put it back on and then squeeze. Furries. All right, so there we go. And now all we have is the two side gribbles to do. Uh, double check, make sure they go in without an issue, no problems. Anything need to be cleaned up, 
because you know I try to clean everything as best as I can. Um, but you know, part of model making is checking your parts and checking your fitment and all of that stuff. I do get people over down being going, everything doesn't just fit absolutely 100,000% perfect. And I'm like, well, it's part of model building. Sometimes you have a little edge here or there. I am human, I err. And plus, on top of making hundreds of kits, <laughs> um, you do miss things every now and then. That's why I'm more than happy that when people contact me and ask me questions, you know, I'm more than happy to answer. I'm, I've spent hours and hours and hours talking to customers. Just same customer about the same thing, trying to figure out an issue, and it comes out to be some oversight or whatever on their part. That doesn't bother me. I mean, we, we all learn together, and um, I put a big old nasty glob of glue somewhere where it shouldn't be, but we'll clean it up. There we go. Um, but, I mean, we're all human. We screw stuff up. We also all don't know how to do the same things. So, you know, I, I there's people that want to buy these kits that's never built anything before or painted anything before. And, you know, I understand that. And I'm more than happy to help anybody do whatever. Um, so, um, let's see. So what we're going to do now is we'll go ahead and put on our side covers. And they only go on one way. Um, you've got this little sharp edge here, and then it's rounded. The rounded goes to the top. And, I mean, you'll see if you try to put it on the other way, it will go. Um, but there we go. Okay. If I could hold my mouth just right and there. Okay. Oh boy. Uh, so <laughs> you have a sharp edge up top, you have the rounded come around the bottom down like that. You have it's notched out to clear this piece, it's notched out to clear this piece up here. So uh yeah. Try and get the try and get glue off my thumb. It's it's sick. Okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> I had glue gluing my thumbnail down right there, and it was bugging the crap out of me. Um, anyways, so back to what I was doing. Um, okay. So you have the, the, the sharp edge and then the rounded slope right there. Sharp edge to the top. And it's just four of these normal. Um dudes here just kind of get them I just go through and get them started first you know of course try to make sure they're going straight in see I missed the hole completely on that one sorry again this one of these things I, it's reaching out in front of me it's kind of a pain in the butt All right, boom, 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 boom. Dad gum it. Don't you love it? <sighs> okay. Get all of these screwed in. Down, down. down and down all right let's put this other one on real quick I think
All right. So much fun watching me screw these in, isn't it? And again, some of y'all, that's another thing, may be tempted to try to use a, like a electric screwdriver or a drill with a screwdriver bit in it to run some of these longer screws in. Don't do that. Do you think it builds up a lot of frictional heat from just hand screwing these in? Yeah, wait till you drive them in super fast. You will literally create so much frictional heat that you will melt and totally destroy the hole of where the screw is going. A drill or electric screwdriver should be nowhere around your, your prop when you're screwing it together. I'm just saying. You know, have some mental fortitude and some, you know, internal cussing, but <laughs> don't don't use an electric drill or, or anything like that to put that together. So now all we're going to do is we're going to glue our, our scope on. So I'm just going to take our glue here. I'm going to put me a good little glob on top there and just a little bit on each side of that. Take that dude. I'm going to spray the opening. I'm going to take this and put that on there. Hold it for a second. All right. Clean up our mess here. Pick up our tools. Put everything back where it goes. And that, my friends, is the DT27, which I think is absolutely badass. I absolutely love the way this turned out. So many variations as I was doing this. Um, Michael with Fan Fiction Props gave me some input on it as well. Um, oh, also, don't forget your orange tip. It's required. Don't want to hear about it. I know, I know, trust me, but it needs to be on there. Um, especially 100% if you're out in public or you're going to a Comic-Con or some crap like that. Um, but it needs to be on there anyways. So there's my disclaimer. And there you guys go. I appreciate it. I hope you all enjoy it.